Now that we have all of our data together in one place, we can go ahead and format the map to uh, explore various relationships between the distribution of polluting facilities in this case and the underlying demographics of neighborhoods. Um, so one of the things we can do is first size these polluting facilities by the amount of pollution they're putting into the air or ground. Um, if these were McDonald's, we'd probably just leave them as plot points, but because we have this data on facilities, we might um, want to display that. So we'd right click on those facilities, and go to properties, click on symbology, and then quantities, and we'll do graduated symbols. You can see what it'll look like down here. And in this value field, we'll select one of our measures of pollution. We'll just go with, ahead with the total on-site emissions. And we can click on template to change the color scheme. And you'll notice that the label has a lot of decimal places, so let's get rid of some of those. Click on label and get rid of all these decimal places. And hit OK. <clears throat> now that we've displayed our EPA listed facilities, we may want to shade our census tracts by a particular variable. Um, let's go ahead and look at percent Latino. Um, we'll right click on SPAT join in this case and go to properties, quantities, and graduated colors is fine. Um, now we have in the fields area here a value and a normalization, essentially a numerator and a de de denominator. So in the value we'll go ahead and scroll down and select Latino. This is from the census data that we joined. And in the normalization we'll select pop tote. So it's the total number of Latinos in each tract divided by the total population in each tract. You can select a different color ramp. Um, I suggest something aesthetically pleasing and intuitive. You don't want a color scheme where you don't necessarily know what's high and what's low or anything that burns the eyes. Um, you'll notice that the label, even though this is going to be a percentage, um, does not appear as such and it's a little under formatted. So go ahead and click on label and format those labels. We're going to do percentages. The number currently represents a fraction. It doesn't already represent a percentage. So I have to click here. And let's get rid of all those decimal places and leave one decimal place. So go ahead and hit OK. You'll notice that the default is for five classes um, using this Jenks system of identifying natural breaks in our data. Uh, if you want to go with a different system, you can click on classify, and there's some options in there. For now, let's just go ahead and hit OK. And so we're well on our way. We're starting to miss some of our data here because um, the Census Bureau is missing data for this aspect, this part of the Denver urban area. Um, so how do we go about and further format these maps? It's um, actually quite simple. Right now we're in the data view. And what we want to do is get into a layout view that we can really start to add titles and legends and then eventually save our finished product out as a JPEG. So one of the things we can do is go to the layout view and you can just go up to view and select layout view. Alternatively, down here in the bottom left we have data view and layout view. So now we're in a layout view and we can go ahead and start inserting titles and legends and so on. If you want to start working with a template, um, that's also an option. You'll see that somewhere on your menu bar you should see something that looks like this it may not be exactly in this spot but these two pieces of paper with a blue arrow over them if you just go ahead and click on those you have access to a number of different templates and if you make sure you're on the traditional layouts template you can kind of scroll through and see the various options um, so let's go ahead and work with this template for example we'll, you can mess around and I'll show you how we do that Go ahead and hit Next and Finish. And let's just make sure we're zoomed in enough so we can see what's going on. <coughs> now we need to start cleaning this up and adding things and so on. Um, the first thing is we might want to get rid of some of these boxes that we don't need. So let's just make sure we're on our black pointer and right click, delete, right click, delete, right click, delete. Here's a rudimentary legend that came with the template. It's not what we want to work with, so we'll just delete that as well. And here's a text box that we may want to make use of later. Um, if you don't like this blue background, for example, just highlight that larger box and then right-click and go to Properties 
And if you scroll through these tabs, you'll see one for frame and background color. Just set that to none. Hit OK. Uh, we might also want to make sure we're zoomed in fully, so grab my magnifying glass and draw a nice square. You always want to make sure you know whether you're at the magnifying glass or the hand so you can move things around. Um, you don't want to be on the wrong um, item when you're trying to format. Now one of the things we might want to do is add a, a zoom in box so we can see a particular neighborhood. Um, let me go ahead. So if we want to create a zoom in of, of a particular neighborhood, what we can do is make sure we're on our main pointer and our box is highlighted here. Right click and copy. And what that's doing is copying all of this data in this particular layer window. And then if I right click somewhere and paste, you'll see that a second box has been replicated. And now I have actually a whole other set of data in another layer section. So I can go ahead and grab the corner of that box and pull it down to some smaller square and just place it somewhere over here. And then I can use my magnifying glass to zoom in on a particular neighborhood and move that around with the hand and so on. Um, now you'll notice that the EPA facilities are rather small in here and that has to do with the projection of this particular template. So what we'll want to do is just go back over here Go to properties and symbol size range. Let's go from 8 to let's say 36 and see what that looks like. That looks a little pretty decent for the larger map, and we can do the same one over here. And do 8 to 36. Um, now we want to obviously in uh, we can change the title, so we'll get our main pointer again. Click on that title, highlight it, right click in properties, and we can call it map 1% Latino, or let's say polluting facilities against percent Latino. And let's go ahead and make that black. So just click on symbol and color, hit OK. And if you don't like the blue background, just highlight that, right click properties, and let's just set to no color. Or if you want to set it to a particular color, that's fine as well. Maybe we'll do um, let's do a light blue. Okay. Now we obviously need uh, a legend, so we'll go to insert and we'll do legend. And you'll notice that it's already reading the various elements of our data in the, in the legend items. So we'll go ahead and hit next. And it wants to know if we want to have a legend title. We don't need to say that. And we'll go next. And if you want a border or something like that or a background, you can add those things and just keep going through and hit finish. And there's the start of a, a legend. Now you'll notice that it requires some cleanup. It still says tote on even though we don't need that anymore and Latino divided by pop tote. So to get rid of those we'll just right click properties and in the items make sure we're clicked on the polluting facilities. Go to style and you'll see what the preview is here. If we go down to this third one on the left side you'll see that it'll just give us polluting facilities with the dots and, and the values. Hit OK and hit apply. You can see how that got rid of that. And we can also do the same thing now for percent Latino. Highlight it, style, third one on the left, hit OK, and hit apply. And then you can go through and you know, interstates is the font isn't as large so let's go ahead and click on interstates, um, go to properties, and label symbol. Let's go ahead and increase that to 24 and see what that looks like. So it increases the font. You can play around with that to get it to be the same font size as these other elements if you wish. Um, but when you're done with that, you can go ahead and hit OK. And that's how you clean up the legend. Um, if you wanted to add additional text, there's that existing text box. Let me just kind of delete that. But if you want to insert text, 
uh, it inserts this really tiny text box that you just have to move and open up and you can type in um, you know, this is environmental sociology uh, data sources census census bureau SF3 2000 uh, EPA TRI 2000 or something like that um, and you go ahead and we'll change the font size to something larger hit OK you can put that data somewhere and if you want to change the justification and so on um, so you can put that somewhere as well um, so you just kind of play around with it and then when you're done you can go ahead and go to file export map and what we'll do is we'll export this as a JPEG um, make sure you go ahead and save it to where you want to save all of your elements and in this one I'll call it P Latino for percent Latino and hit save and it exported that as a, a JPEG and now what you can do is actually go through and re um, redefine your variables. So if you wanted to do a median household income, you would just do MHI over nothing, because it's just a single value, and you can start to format that as needed. Um, you'd Obviously, if you're going to still do the inset, you'd have to change this as well. Um, but what you can do is you can just start to change your variables and create a new one, um, retitle, and so on. Um, redo the legend, and you'll be able to then file, export your MHI map as a JPEG and go through and do that for whatever variables you're interested in. So that's how you go about doing some very basic but core uh, formatting of maps. Um, one other option I'll go ahead and show you at this time is if you didn't want to do um, graduated colors, one of the other interesting options is to do dot density especially if you're doing race and ethnicity. And I'll show you real quick how this works. If you wanted to look at white, black, and Latino, for example, you just click on white non-Hispanic, add that over, black non-Hispanic, add it over, and Latino, and add it over. And then you can just double click on each one of these individually to set it to a particular color. So I'm going to make white non-Hispanic red. I'll make black non-Hispanic a bright blue, and Latinos will make a bright orange and then each dot will be sized at two and each dot will represent let's say 25 people and hit OK this is so this is a map of the Denver metro area um, by census tract looking at dot density if we don't want all of these census tract boundaries in there we'll just go back to properties and get rid of the census tract boundary width to make that nothing and you can hit OK. <clears throat> now we may want to keep them in um, depending on what you're looking for. But that's how you can do a dot density map. And you can play around with how, how many people each dot represents. But you can see again the density of Latinos and African Americans in North Denver and in, into Aurora and then how the suburbs and central south Denver are predominantly white. Um, but that's another option for it works really well for um, displaying race and ethnic composition. So that's how you do formatting.